Recently, I've had some criticism leveled at me for my depiction of Theodosia Burr Alston in my novel, Theodosia and the Pirates. So the question that I'm going to address today is, what degree of liberty are you allowed to take with a historical character? What are the ethics of writing a historical novel? The situation with Theodosia was that um, she was a well-known personage. I would not have heard of her if she had not been. Uh, she was the daughter of Aaron Burr, and just like her father, she was subject to a lot of gossip. And so when she disappeared, on December 31st, 1812, she boarded a ship and was not heard from again, and nobody from that ship uh, apparently was ever heard from again. Um, there were a lot of rumors. Of course, the, the most uh, tame, uh, plain vanilla supposition is that the ship went down in a storm and all of the passengers and crew died. Other possibilities are that they were attacked by pirates, that she was captured by pirates. Oh, does not want me to talk about this either? It's a sensitive topic. In my novel, she doesn't get attacked by pirates. She is, however, at an earlier date, uh, treated very badly as a prisoner by a British officer. And why did I do that? Why couldn't I just make everybody behave in a very gentlemanly fashion toward Theodosia so that in no way would she be dishonored by anything that happened in the novel? Well, first of all, it's a novel. In order to have a novel, there has to be a conflict, there has to be a plot, there has to be tension. But secondly, um, my novel is about the War of 1812, and it is meant to dramatize the sorts of things that happened there. I think that it's actually quite interesting that uh, we have a theory that she was captured by pirates, but there's no theory that the British ever did anything to her. Why is that? People forget that the bad guys, at least from the American perspective, in the War of 1812 were not pirates, and they certainly weren't privateers. The bad guys were the British. And yet today, when we talk about the War of 1812, it's as if the British were, well, they were just doing their thing. Uh, maybe they were conscripting uh, American sailors, but in all other respects, we think of the British as being very proper gentlemen, and we don't think of them doing anything bad. Very few people have heard of the sack of Hampton. Uh, very few people realize now that during the War of 1812, the British invaders not only burned down houses, not only burned the White House, but also uh, sometimes got completely out of hand and uh, were extremely cruel to civilian populations, killing elderly people in their beds, um, raping women, killing children. Now, I didn't want to go on a gory exploration of all of that. I, you know, my novel is, is actually a fairly decent one. Um, in which not a lot happens along the lines of atrocities. Uh, but what I did was I created a, an encounter between Nicholas Lockyer and Theodosia 
early on in the story that would set up a tension and a conflict uh, that would have a resolution much, much later in the story. But for purposes of the theme of the story, for purposes of learning about history, I think that was a good choice uh, because it allows the modern day reader to realize what sides were involved in this conflict and uh, just exactly what side the privateers fell on. I think that by making pirates the bad guys in these stories about Theodosia, uh, we're actually dishonoring Aaron Burr as well because his expedition against the Spanish was of the same nature as the attempts by other filibusters uh, to deal with America's enemies outside of uh, the political process. And what I hope that people take away from my novel, in addition to the fact that Theodosia Burr was a very brave woman, a very um, admirable and heroic uh, character, I would also like them to understand that Aaron Burr and Jean Lafitte were good guys and that the bad guys were the people who wanted only the Navy and the Army uh, to have the right to defend the United States against her enemies. Of course, it's possible that I misunderstand and that the criticism that was leveled against me with regard uh, to dishonoring the name of Theodosia was not about uh, her encounter with Lockyer. Maybe it's about the fact that I have her having an affair with Jean Lafitte. Um, honestly, I don't think that if, if Aaron Burr or Theodosia herself were alive today, or if they were looking at us from some nether world uh, in which uh, they could see everything that's taking place here, I think they would think that that was pretty funny. Uh, I don't think they'd be offended. It's true that Aaron Bird denied the fact that she was captured by pirates. What else could he do? Uh, he didn't know what had happened to her. Uh, but if what had happened to her was the thing that I depict happening, that she fell in love, that she found the man of her dreams, that she was finally able to find someone who could replace her father in her life as, as a great and wonderful leader, as well as the man uh, in whom she uh, placed all of her trust, I I don't think that's a bad thing to have happen to her. We should all be that lucky. So I do think that there's also an element of um, double standard here. Because while I have heard from Theodosia apologists, and they basically shook their finger at me and told me I was a very bad person for writing this novel, um, None of the Jean Lafitte apologists thought it was in any way uh, a dishonor for him to suggest that perhaps he had had an affair with Theodosia. Now, why do you suppose that is? What do you think, Bob?